spritz. I want to start a community of people that are positive, that want to open up and learn how to grow. That's what I want. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a self discovery. And I've seen a few of these videos on YouTube, but I wanted to do my own twist. Um, so you saw by the title, it's basically talking about what it would be like to become a YouTuber slash influencer. And I know there are other platforms like Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and all that stuff, but I think this is going to be mainly surrounded around YouTube. So let's not waste any more time and get into it. So it's obviously not a typical job being on social media and trying to be a YouTuber, right? Like it's times have changed basically. If you wanted to, you can pursue it. And who knows? I mean, obviously it can be a career, but I can't even imagine what kids in high school are saying right now. Like, I want to grow up and be a YouTuber. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> Except I didn't say it in high school. I said it when I was 26. <laughs> so yes, it's a, it's a little bit different. It's not like trying to be a doctor or a lawyer or going to school to be a nurse or anything like that. But it is an option. A more difficult option at that, I think. I feel like there would be plenty of difficult situations. It would be, I don't want to say more cons than pros, but I think the weight of the cons would outweigh the weight of the pros. So if you're not passionate about it, then I don't think you would last. It sounds confusing and messy and you could end up realizing you would need a quick schedule because you would almost always be on all the time like who wants that nobody wants that even if their job is fun you still want downtime at least i would you know? because it's not like you're going into a physical space where you're clocking in from nine to five you could be in your downtime and be scrolling on your phone just hanging out and all of a sudden you get a video idea you have to take time go to your notebook or your phone wherever you write it down i'm old school so i say notebook but i know most people write everything in their phone which is not a big deal like everybody's different i just like my pen and paper so pro con section number one the line can easily be blurred. So having to turn off and turn on, I feel like would be a little bit difficult because it's not like you're going into an actual office and clocking in and you know when you get home, you're off. So you can be on and be working in any space or at any given time. So that kind of seems like a bit difficult, but if you're passionate about it, I Think you can make it work which leads to number two your life could be your job which is I feel like why youtubers you know want to fill you in on maybe a breakup they've had or an engagement which I mean, most of this stuff would be shared anyways if you really think about it it doesn't just have to be influencers but I guess there's so much hype when an influencer doesn't share something and the public finds out, it's like, mm, she didn't tell us or he didn't let us know or yada, 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 whatever the case may be. So I feel like that doesn't seem very fun. At least I think so. <laughs> 
So the third one would be privacy. Privacy would seem like a balance, like the influencer wants, you know, to keep you updated and keep you in the loop and start discussion. Well, it obviously depends what, you know, genre too for their channel. So I guess it would just depend. And so with the balance, you would have to try to figure out like, what is sharing too much? What is sharing too little? And like, if you have a family channel, mom, dad, mom, mom, dad, dad, whatever the case is, if you have a family channel and you're vlogging, like I personally can't imagine, you know, how difficult that must be. It's gotta be hard to show your life on camera and be subject and open to neg negativity, hate, criticism, all that type of stuff. It's a lot, I feel like. And a lot of people, I feel like, don't understand. I, yes, I am obviously trying to be a YouTuber. I want to start a community of people that are positive, that want to open up and learn how to grow. That's what I want. And so I feel like even I don't know yet what's to come because I'm still in the beginning stages of it all. So learning how to find that balance of being private but not too private has got to be difficult. I am not a fan of these fine lines. Everything settles in them. I don't understand. Okay, number four, posting, uploading for a community of people. Kind of like what I just said. <laughs> posting for a community of people that you have, your audience, depending on... That was loud. I apologize. <laughs> depending on what your audience consists of, you know, everybody has a different group out there, you know? There is a photography group. There is a family vlogging group. There are people who are quirky and goofy. There are YouTubers who are Christians. There's all different types of people and everybody likes something different, you know? There is something out there for everyone. And I can't imagine how cool that must be to have your group. It must be so amazing besides for the negativity <laughs> so yeah getting your audience your particular audience or anybody really inspiring them drawing them in lifting people up giving people hope like that that is what should be in our heart and I love seeing that I love when people inspire others it's a feeling like no other. And it's kind of like getting a family in a sense. Like you get that warm feeling, that homey feeling. Almost like you're not alone. So I like that. Okay, number five is kind of just for me personally and my experience. YouTubers learn comprehension, summarization, how to reiterate things especially with my channel, which is why I'm saying personally, because those skills I need to work on. As you see in my bloopers, I just, some days I just cannot get it together. So I'm excited for that growth and to expand my vocabulary, something else I need to be working on which kind of goes hand in hand with number six, is you get to learn how to communicate better. I feel like things can be misinterpreted so bad on the internet and we've all seen it happen with a bunch of different people. So it, it's like inevitable, you're gonna run into problems. And then you have to clarify and go over, well, this is what I meant and you can always learn communication skills like that's never a bad thing to have so i'm looking forward to that one too which also goes with number seven you can't please everyone and you have to know going into this that 
you're not going to be able to do it. You're just not. And technically, well, I guess not technically, but in reality, you don't need to please everyone or anyone. So a good reminder. And as we all know it, cancel culture is a real thing, which doesn't even make sense to be honest. Like, it sounds insane that your viewers' opinions is what matters when it comes to that. But I guess it's irrelevant because if you're a good person, then you really ain't got to worry about it. <sighs> Let me clarify. I say it sounds insane because the parts that I don't get is like when somebody says something like three years ago, five years ago, seven years ago, like there is so much growth that happens in that amount of time frame. Like, oh, what is that TikTok? It reminds me of the TikTok where um, they say, like judging me, judging my past is like judging my old house. Like I don't live there anymore. Please tell me y'all know what I'm talking about. I, I know you know what I'm talking about. Everybody's seen that one by now. Um, so, it's kind of like the same thing almost like if that part doesn't make sense to me you know but anyways we will move on to number eight which is youtubers and influencers are put up on a pedestal this one i don't know where this one came from i don't know why people do this but all of a sudden if you're an influencer you're made out to be you are perfect, you have to be a role model now, and you have to do everything the right way and be perfect. Which we know that's not realistic. So so who are setting these standards? That's completely insane as well. I feel like that's not fair to do to the influencer. Like, especially the ones who wanna motivate and inspire others. Like just because you wanna motivate people doesn't mean you have to have your life together like nobody's life is perfect for example think about life coaches they don't have to have their whole life set up and perfect and ready to go to help others with their life you know it, it doesn't make sense number nine learning how to deal with negative comments Whew, I feel like I might struggle with this one depending on what the comments are and influencers youtubers whatever you want to whatever title you want to use they have to develop thick skin and as you've seen social media can be very cruel for no reason so to say that it comes with the territory yes it does but it's also sad that you would have to expect that like, if you're trying to be a YouTuber, you would have to expect negativity. And I feel like that's sad. You would have to expect that. Like, we all can't be nice and be a good person. Criticism, okay, that's fine. We all should know the difference, even though some of us don't. But you just never know what someone's going through. People say that for a reason. Because you never know what somebody is going through. Don't be that mean person. Learn to say something nice because everyone has a choice. So make the right one. And the last one I have wrote down for the pros and cons section is you are your own boss. You decide what goes on your channel and you decide what energy you put out into the world. That's my favorite. So the last subject will be three questions I wrote down. For me to kind of answer honestly and kind of use this moment to look back on. So, we shall see. The first question is, what am I most looking forward to? And I put a community, having a community of like-minded people and the growth of my own journey. Those two, like I couldn't just put one thing, they go hand in hand. Having a group of people that want to be 
positive, that want to learn to grow, that aren't scared to talk about stuff. That is where I need to be. And that's why I'm here. Question number two, what is my least favorite part? My least favorite part of trying to be a YouTuber, influencer, whatever, is it is very time consuming. If you are not passionate about YouTube, you're gonna quit automatically. It takes up so much time, so much time. So definitely the time consuming part for sure. And number three, I put, what am I most scared of or uncertain about? I am most scared of the whole privacy thing. That kind of scares me because I'm not one of those people on Facebook all day, every day, posting my every move. That's just not me. And if that's you, that is totally okay. It's just not my thing. Okay, and I don't look at you like you crazy because you doing it. I'm looking at myself like I'm crazy. Okay, put it that way. If I were to do that, then I would be like, girl, what are you doing? Does that make sense? I hope so. The real ones will know. So I think that line of privacy can kind of be blurred, like I said in my pros and cons. But again, I am here for it. I know I am here with a good heart trying to do the right thing trying to contribute and personally that's all i can do i'm going to try my best it's definitely going to be a journey and i'm so excited where my journey will be at in a year from now it's going to be so exciting okay let me stop being a dork okay that's enough okay i think that is it I hope you guys like this video and come back again Friday 745 don't forget hit the notification bell be reminded support me okay support your girl and I will see you next week with another video don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and I'll see you next time bye Yes, and I don't have all my jewelry, so that stinks, but oh well. Anyways, <laughs> gray hair is blowing in the wind. <gasps> oh. Yeah, that was corny. Anyways, so let's not waste any more time and let's get into it. I feel like that's all you heard the whole time. What is this? I am not liking how I cannot talk these days. So it kind of goes hand in hand with the line getting blurry. It would kind of mean it can easily get confusing and messy, which means it would make you, what am I trying to say here? God, <sighs> Ugh. this YouTube stuff will definitely help me out with my wordings. Mm. Which leads me to pros and cons, and I mixed them all in there because it's a bunch of different stuff. It's a variety. Variety? <sighs> I can't wait till the day that I don't mess up as many times. So, um, this brow's looking a little thick. She's gonna be thick today. And it's kind of like you gain a. La, 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 la. I should have got some water because everything's sticking together. Does anybody else do this? Turn their head sideways, up, left, right? Is it just me? Maybe because I got the deep set eyes. <laughs> Gotta create fake Cupid's bow. Because mine is non existent. Oh, wait, thumbnail. <laughs> Was this eye not blending the whole time of my video? And nobody told me? Well, this brow's got some serious issues going on. I need to come up with a hashtag for my grays. Please send me some ideas. Oh, that was cute.
I've been into myself lately, guys, okay? Let me live my best life. Don't judge. Everybody has a choice. See you later. Bye.